Cinnabel was my first PvP faction cruiser. I bought the ship right after I lost my Phantasm, and that Cinnabel did have a very long and a very exciting life. Now this is the Celos, originally called Camwell, but they changed the name into Celos, and I think I like Celos a little bit more. I think it sounds a bit more angelic, but this is the new ship that's been added to the game, one of the four new ships, and this one is a Covertops cruiser. So, uh, it will be interesting to see how this little boat performs, but first let's take a look at the trade description. The Robos is almost the same as with any other angel ship, but it can fit Covertops clocking devices, which is very interesting because a clock is in a ball. That's going to be very fun and I will say very exciting. Now in order to get the skill bonuses out of this ship you have to have the expert skills and this is the new thing. Uh, all the new ships require the expert skills in order to get their stats and I kind of like that. It finally puts the expert skills uh, into proper use and this little boat has a Wobbifer range bonus. So can technically work as a, let's say, cross between an Ashimu and a Cinnabal and a, let's say, Bellicos or uh, a ship similar to that. Basically any other covertops cruiser. One drone slot, five high slots, three, uh, three medium slots, five low slots, three combat and three engineering rigs. The cells can be a shield or armor tank. Uh, the hit points are about the same. The capacitor is a little bit lower than the capacitor on the Fiend, and I think the Celos might have the lowest capacitor, although that's to be expected, angel ships are not really known to have a very good capacitor, but this little boat is uh, very fast, it is the fastest out of the newly added four cruisers. Now, I call the Fiend cute, I'm well aware of that, but uh, I can't call this thing cute, I mean, let's be honest, the Cinnabal is one of the ugliest ships in the game, and since this ship is based on the Cinnabal, yeah, it's definitely not the prettiest ship in the game, but I kind of like its design. It has that uh, unique aspect to it. Now here you could see the stats of my odd cannons. I have one Scrammer, dual webs, and in the low slots one afterburner, one clocking device, one damage roll, one large extender, and one gyro stabilizer. Now, the Celos is primarily a PvP ship, although later I'll show that it is quite usable in PvE as well. And this is one of the builds that I would use. Now, for the rigs, I have the anti-EM reinforcer, I have one anti-thermal screen reinforcer, and one core defense field extender. In the engineering rigs, one polycarbon and dual auxiliary thrusters. 68,000 hit points in, uh, in the overall defense, and this is currently primarily a shield tank ship. 506.28 meter per second is the velocity, 4.5 AU per second is the warp speed. Now as for the Nanocore, you don't have a lot of choices at the moment, but I've heard that you can use the Cinnabon Nanocores on this ship, so if you have Cinnabon Nanocores, then I think you should be able to use them on this ship. Undocking. Please do tell me uh, if uh, you did that with your ship and if it is compatible. I've been told that it is, but since my Cinnabon currently is a little bit far away, uh, I didn't have the, the ship with me to test it out. But I'll definitely do that next time. Uh, after all, I do have a lot of plans with these ships, and I'll show you what I'm talking about very, very soon. Now, let's take a look at the active stats of this cute little boat. I called it cute. There we go. I mean, just look at it. The symbol and the cellos do look like they have been smoking that, that good that good stuff, you know. I mean, I, I love the ship. Uh, I love the design of it. It's, it's, it's funny and... Uh, you know, if you see the face of the symbol, you know what I'm talking about. 18 seconds activation time, okay. It's fairly fast, 1.4 kilometers per second. Now, it can't decloak and aggro immediately, unfortunately. It's not uh, a Stratio, so you still have the reactivation delay. And I think it is about 15 seconds. Although with the skill per level bonus, that is 
significantly reduced so you do have the reactivation delay but uh, that shouldn't be a big problem after all all of the core top scooters have that except the bombers and except the status and well here we go a cloaky cinnable lovely I used to do a cloaky cinnable for fun like three years ago I never thought that three years later I'll actually be flying one uh, it's kinda it's kinda funny but uh, I love it I'm really a fan of this ship so far okay now this ship also has a special mode and yeah I was testing out to see if I can immediately lock 12 seconds is the reactivation delay okay and 12 seconds uh, basically is the time that you need to wait until you have to until you can lock on the target so the same tactic applies to this ship you scout target warp out decloak click the special mode and warp back in and I'll show you what the special mode does the special mode on this ship is very interesting and uh, I like how they made the special modes on these special ships. I have to admit, they did a good job with these little cruisers, uh, although Docking I'm not really requested. a fan of the boxes. The boxes will go away though, so that you don't have to worry. And uh, I'll talk about that in this video a little bit later, uh, when we reach the combat part. But first, let me show you all the, all the different builds that I can do. Now I will do a more in-depth build video, uh, very soon when the ship is available on the test server so that I can be a bit more creative uh, with the with the builds. Over here I have uh, some limits where I can't really uh, do what I want to do because of ESC and other things but once the test server is up I will be having a lot of fun with these ships and I'll be giving you a lot more uh, a lot more builds that you can play around with. Now the DPS is really good, 1.2 thousand uh, with a tanky build that's also a cloaky build with an afterburner 193,000 hit points 83, 85, 81 and 85 percent resistance you know actually pretty solid uh, really happy with the, with the stats from this thing and you can also do something like this dual gyro tethers, one damage toll and there is the cloaking device and there is the afterburner this is of course uh, a build that I'll use later for DPS. This is a tank build. Dual invulnerable fields, one damage roll. The clocking device, of course. The clocking device will have I'm to be there him. for the vast majority of time. After all, uh, it is a core top ship, so it it has to rely on the on the clocking device. So, uh, let's see how much resistance I can get out of this little boat. It can technically be used. Uh, against snipers very easily basically a zero kilometer orbit because you have a lot of you still have a lot of shield or armor it can do both don't forget that it's an angel ship they can they can do both shield and armor and now with the damage control active oh okay I think my damage control is bugged lovely so uh, this is the battery mode plus 20% scan dilution, plus 12% tracking speed, turret cooler minus 30%, minus 20% turret damage, ship, ship loss minus 20%, turret extra fall off minus 10%, and ship capacity recharge plus 20%. So basically, it increases your rate of fire, but it makes your ship a little bit slower, and it also increases your tracking, which is honestly very interesting. Here you can take a look at the um, turret stats once it's active. It did increase the DPS, basically, it works like a mini barrage implant, uh, a barrage implant that's basically working all the time, uh, doesn't have a cooldown. And this ship's velocity is still good. The capacitor recharge is a bit longer, so it will affect the active tank if you have this ship as a active tank. So as of now, I see that this ship is following the same angel tactic, basically hit and run. So that's going to be uh, very very interesting uh, in practically use 228,000 hit points now with this ship you can also technically do uh, the thermal circulation implant on a shield tank because uh, technically you have the same accept. volume of shield and armor and the thermal circulation implant can actually help a lot uh, to be both it's, it's kinda, it will be uh, funny for me to say this but you can technically have the modules for shield 
but you can keep the thermal circulation for that passive armor tank at the same time. So you, you technically have at the same time a proper shield tank and you have also a very good armor defense. Same thing is also almost the same, uh, actually almost the same on the Fiend, which is a fantastic shield tank, but definitely not uh, as good as an armor tank as the Salos. And now let me quickly swap my rigs into DPS rigs, and this is where the fun begins. So, uh, 125 DPS, cold, and I'll add two gyro stabilizers. This is practically my classic Cinnabal build, with the only difference being that my Cinnabal doesn't have a cocking device, the ship will have a cocking device. So, 1124.63 DPS, which is a little bit, I would say, almost the same with the with my Cinnabal. I think my Cinnabal has like 1.3000 DPS, but it has actually no 1024 DPS on my Cinnabal and 1100 DPS on the Celos. So a little bit higher DPS. Now let's take a look at the battle mode and let's take a look at the Barrage Implant DPS. I have the Barrage Implant, so it's going to be uh, very useful on this loot boat. 1.6 thousand DPS. This is uh, all with the Barrage Implant active. And with the Battery Mode active, here you can take a look at the stats of the Special Mode again. It should give me minus 30% extra turret cooldown, which means faster rate of fire. 1.8 thousand DPS. Well, not bad. I mean, uh, that's honestly pretty solid, and I haven't even used the Jaro Stabilizers yet. 2.2 thousand DPS with one Jaro Stabilizer, and with the second one, 2643.49. For hit and run, and for a stealthy cruiser, this is fantastic. Uh, I'm honestly very, very happy with the Celos so far. And you also have long range webs on top of that, so you can web the target uh, a bit further away than uh, than normal. With the Predator webs you should get about 19-20 km range, which honestly is pretty solid. Uh, this ship does have good fall off and you can technically use the medium artillery cannons as well. And I'll do a build uh, with the medium artillery cannons today as well. Now we can do something like this, although I have to admit this is a bit risky and I usually like to have at least one damage troll on my ship, but in some cases if you are, let's say, engaging a sniper and if you are already playing on a zero kilometer orbit, triple draw stabilizers will definitely uh, work really, really well. And technically, oh, what just happened? Oh, my game crashed, lovely. Well then, let's go back in the game quickly. And my apologies for that little cut. The game still has bugs. However, I have to active. say that they did fix the, the module bug. That bug made me so angry. Like, I had to turn the modules on all day long after each and every jump that I did. But now it's fixed, thankfully. Okay, well, uh, back to the cells here. So, uh, technically, you can add. Technically, you can remove the the clocking device, and technically you can use this ship as the Cinnabon. But since it has a clocking device, it would be a waste not to be clock. However, I can definitely see a build where I have three gyro stabilizers, and instead of the clocking device I have that one, let's say, damage control, or I can also completely copy my Cinnabon build on the Celos and use it like a Cinnabon. That can work, ironically, because I, I say ironically because this is a core top ship. Supposed to be relying on stealth, right? Well, technically, yeah, you can use it with the with the classic Cinnabal PvP build easily. But since it's a cover top ship, I'll try to uh, be a bit more creative with the builds here, and uh, I'll try to make the ship work with a clocking device. 2038 DPS with the barrage and special mode active. 2.4 thousand DPS with one gyro stabler with the second one. 2.8 thousand DPS, and with the third one, it's 3187.66 DPS. Now, also keep in mind the barrage implant has been nerfed, and I haven't really checked out my simul DPS, but I think it's about 2.5 thousand. So this ship does have 
higher DPS than the good old Cinnabon. It also has better tracking, which is going to be very useful and very helpful against smaller fast targets. Honestly, so far, I really love this ship and glad I bought it. <laughs> glad, I, glad I bought it and glad I'll, I'll be flying it. Now, I think my favorite build so far is this one. Uh, it has a Jarrah Stabilizer, a extended damage tool, it also has a cloak. It also has some very good DPS. Now, you can use the micro warp drive instead of the afterburner. That's basically uh, how I usually use my symbol. Now, I quickly have to steal one micro warp drive, one C type from one of my cruisers. Uh, let's see if my Vigilan has it. I think it has it. The Vigilan has some very nice equipment on it, and I'll just borrow that micro warp drive. Thank you. I'll make sure to return it. I feel bad taking my own modules from my own ships, but I have to do it because for some reason my modules are gone from the from the hangar here. Okay, back to the cellars and. Let's see the maximum possible micro warp drive speed on this on this little boat. Now the capacitor will take a heavy impact, but it should be quite fast. Undocking. Micro warp drive is very good when you have to quickly take distance, when you have to tackle something, or when you have to basically uh, bail out if things get if things get a little uncomfortable so my cooperative is enabled 3177.53 meters per second not bad uh, it can definitely be pushed higher if i have if i had like three auxiliary thrusters a nanocore with speed and if I have a general unit for my cooperative I could get five I can get probably five thousand meters per second, 4.9, 4 4.8 meter per second, which also is uh, fairly fast, after all, uh, it is a angel ship and they're known for their speed. You can also do something like this, a dual propulsion build, and I really do like dual propulsion builds. I used to run them on a lot of my ships, uh, my Cinnabon used to have a dual propulsion Undocking. build, and it's good when you have to tackle the target, and then when you tackle the target in order to maintain a stable orbit, you turn off the micro warp drift and then you turn on the afterburner. Extremely effective when you're fighting ships that have a lot of webs and a scrambler. That way, uh, you can still maintain a very good speed tank velocity against battle ships or some of the other ships that have the big turrets. And you can easily maintain a zero kilometer orbit that way. For tank you have a damage roll and one extender. For DPS the battle mode should be more than enough, it does uh, improve the DPS quite a bit. And I'll just show you how the seamless transition uh, between the modules works. Honestly, this build is going to be probably one of my favorites actually. Uh, I will test them all out in combat. I mean, that's what I do. I do mostly PvP, so uh, I'll definitely have I'll definitely have a lot of uh, chances to test out all of these builds uh, in combat. I mean, I already tested out the Fiend, and that thing is dominating. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully this little ship can dominate as well. I think it will because it it has some pretty good, fantastic DPS. So, uh, I mean, Angel ships are known for their DPS and speed. So, yeah. Uh, that's one of the aspects of the ship that I really Docking like. Requesting. The dual propulsion build seem to be working really well. And now let's change the turrets into the large artillery cannons. I mean, uh, medium artillery cannons. Now they have better range, but much, much lower tracking. And for this build, I recommend to use a long range disruptor because you don't want to be within web and scrum range. Uh, the, the webs are for defense, and you can basically use this build with a micro warp drive. I use the micro warp drive so that I'm able to control the range. Basically, that's the that's the goal. You don't want your target to to get too close to you bec because if they get too close to you, you are not going to be able to hit them, and then you might be in trouble. 
So if a build like this uh, range is key and you must not uh, allow anything to get too close to you. Although if, if it happens that something gets too close to you, uh, you, have dual uh, you have dual webs and you can technically use the dual propulsion build in that case. The dual propulsion build might work really well if you get, uh, if there is a small ship that gets too close to you and if they scramble you, you still have enough speed to take range and kill them. The DPS is pretty nice for the artillery cans. they have good alpha damage and uh, with the barrage implant they should I'm be docking. quite nasty. Now let me quickly change the build one more time. I want to test out the the uh, DPS uh, with the a lot with the medium artillery cans and later I will also swap the build to dual ballistic to do uh, to dual jar stay one thousand one hundred fifty three point fifteen dps with the large with the medium artillery cans well pretty solid now we have uh, better tracking and lower range twenty three twenty one optimal is twenty three I think that's pretty good that's pretty solid range actually and if you have the Pratt webs you can take range at 20 kilometers and shoot your target without a problem. Honestly, pretty good idea. Uh, we'll have to accepted. test that out as well. Could be very interesting. Okay, now with artillery cans you can do a lot of uh, a lot of other things. Now let me add that damage control, a cloaking device or a gyrost, uh, gyro stabilizer and then a clocking device. You can also do a build like this. Again, it relies on range and don't let anything get too close to you. The rigs are the same. The DPS is now a little bit higher. Okay. Pretty solid. Now let me undock and let me show you the DPS with Undocking. this current build. You can also play around with the general units and basically add a bit more tracking, you can also add tracking computers uh, which I will show you today as well okay battery mode active, 804, actually disable 804.77 dps is uh, when the special mode is offline with the special mode active it's 919.74 and now with the barrage implant, that is 1336.83. Really good. Now let me orbit with the first gyro stabilizer. It's still bucked. Lovely. Okay, uh, 1 minute and 29, 29 seconds later, 1.6 thousand DPS. With the second, it's 1.8 thousand DPS. Pretty good. I'm very happy with the current. DPS outcome uh, with the current build. Docking request accepted. Okay, let me change the build again. You can do an active tank as I've shown before, uh, but for this ship I actually do prefer uh, a passive tank. But in the end, you can pick the build that you think will work the best for you. There is literally a thousand ways how to build the ship, and I uh, will show you a lot of different ways how you can build the ship in one of the next videos. So, uh, but I think if I were to use strike cannons, I would be sticking with uh, with that micro warp drive build. Now, for a high sec only PVE build, you can do something like this: triple draw stabilizers, one large booster, one afterburner. Now, for the medium slots, I will use one Nosferatu. I think I might not have enough power for it, but uh, we're we're about to find that out. For a 100% PvE build, definitely having a power rig and combining a large Nosferatu with a large booster is the way to go. Definitely going to be uh, capacitor stable and it will maintain the the shield for a very long time. After all, in high sec, you don't really need to have a lot of tank uh, in high sec. You want to have minimal tank, but maximum possible DPS. And I think I'll just go and stick with a medium Nosferatu for now, but I'm fairly sure uh, a lot of you guys will be able to fit dual large Nosferatu. Uh, you can fit 
a large booster and a large transfer output in this ship. So that's basically the way how I would roll Undocking. this ship. And let me undock and let me show you the maximum DPS output. I think the DPS output will be about the same uh, as with the PvP build that utilizes three gyro stabilizers. But you know, just in case, I will show you the DPS again, just in case if I miss anything. Because uh, if I miss anything, well, uh, I can change it unless I upload a different video. So I like to double check everything, or triple check, or quadruple check everything. 1.2000 DPS, okay, with the battery mode. 1.4000 DPS, perfect, with the barrage implant. 2038.63 with one gyro stabilizer. 2.4000 with the second one. It's 2.8000 with the third one. It is 3187.66 DPS. And yes, I am very happy with this little cruiser. It's fast, uh, it's cloaky, also a very good trait, uh, it has good DPS and it is hard to catch. Now it is fairly tanky, no, not as tanky as the Fiend, definitely not as tanky as the Chameleon reached. or you know some of the other things, some of the other ships like that, but it's fairly tanky Warp drive uh, and active. going to be a very very dangerous little ship. Okay, now let's see how this ship feels in combat. The Fiend is... I would say the Fiend might be... Actually, I, I don't know, I mean, uh, when I try to compare these ships, it's a bit difficult, because each one of these new faction cruisers uh, is very unique, and they all excel at one thing, uh, while at the same time they're, they're also uh, bad at some other things. I mean, that's just how that's just how E works. In the case of the Celos here, this ship is, I would say, pretty good at PVE. It can definitely be pretty good at PVE. The one thing that might not feel uh, that good about PVE in this ship is the implant. The barrage implant, as you guys all know, uh, is mostly a PvP implant. It, it, its PvE application is very limited and in most cases you will spend the whole barrage charge on uh, a single target. Meanwhile, let's say the Focus Crystal and the Pulse Crystal are basically much more better at uh, PvE because they have the sustained DPS and they don't have, uh, well, the focus crystal has a charge time and it has a drawback where you miss, you lose the DPS, but its DPS is mostly uh, very stable and uh, it is very difficult to miss anything uh, with the Fiend, especially in high sec PvE, so its sustained DPS with the implant definitely uh, much higher. But the barrage implant is quite scary in PvP because it can burst down a ship uh, in in seconds. Uh, however, it has been nerfed, so it is not as good and as lethal as it used to be. Uh, the drone bombs are currently the most lethal and the scariest, the scariest implant in the game. You might be asking me, well, why don't they nerf bombs? I have no idea. I mean. I I know that they will nerf bombs. I know that. Uh, they have to. I mean, that's just... It's so stupid what the drone bombs can do. I mean... Just, I mean, I think you guys know. I don't have to explain that, but uh, I believe you guys know what the... What the drone bombs do. I mean, uh, I basically show that show that on my videos a lot of times when... When I fly with my friends and... They do have drone bombs. They do have a bunch of other implants. And you can see... Uh, when the enemy ship just disintegrates when the drone bombs start working. So I do expect the drone bombs to be nerfed. Now back to the back to the turrets. Uh, the turrets do lack a proper PvE implant. The projectile turrets do lack a proper PvE implant. Just to, you know, because when I say turrets, uh, the hybrid turrets and laser turrets are also turrets, but I have to be more specific. The projectile turrets, the Mimeter cannons, 
don't really have a PvE implant at moment and I believe at one point they might change the barrage implant so that it has a more universal role. They also might add a new implant. Uh, they might also change a lot of a lot of other things how they work. Might make them passive. I don't know. I mean, there is just a lot of possibilities that uh, we can account for. Now I was talking about the boxes that you can obtain the ships uh, that basically give you uh, a a faction cruiser. I don't like the boxes, and I don't know why they're there, but uh, it is what it is. Um, I don't like the boxes, but once the boxes go away, and yeah, you don't have to worry, because those boxes are not permanent. They, they're they here just for this little event, for, I don't know, like one or two weeks, and then they'll be gone. And when they're gone, the prices of these ships will skyrocket. Now, I've talked about that with some of my friends. And I speculated that uh, the price will go five times up. Now currently, this ship costs about 2.5 billion, 3 billion. So, if I end up being correct, then perhaps the price for uh, for a Celos might jump to about, let's say, six, seven, eight, nine billion. Now my friend told me that because of uh, the way manufacturing works. That they have actually a lot of mineral requirements and less ESC requirements for manufacturing these ships. They told me that their price will be about 5 to 6 billion. And I actually would say that, yeah, that's uh, most likely what their price will be once the boxes are gone. So you can technically buy a bunch of these ships now while they're cheap, keep them and basically wait for the boxes to go away and then when the availability for these ships is uh, getting a bit you know a bit more difficult to obtain them then you might make profit selling them now the price will probably keep dropping and again my friend estimated uh, that the price will drop to lowest at about 1.5 billion but you know if you see that the price starts rising, I would be buying them then and then when the price does really go up, when the boxes go away, then you should be able to make good profit selling these ships. I mean, I do like the industry thing that they that they did with these ships. It does make the, the game a bit more interesting in that aspect. The manufacturing is very interesting uh, and I like that so far. And the same thing can be said about the other fact, the other navy battleships, which I will be flying. Don't worry, I'll get my hands on some faction, on some navy battleships. The navy battleships are actually marauders, by the way. They have a crazy tank, and they also have some fantastic DPS. And our wish to get marauders came true, so I'm quite happy with. I mean. Did you look at the, the resistances on these things? They're insane! Like, like I, I mean, you will see what I'll, what, I'll, what I'll do with these monsters. I'll be creating the tankier ships in the game again, uh, and I cannot wait to do that. Now, uh, the performance on this ship is pretty good so far. One thing that might be a little bit problematic, but at the same time uh, can be easily solved with a Nosferatu. The longer capacitor regeneration while the special mode is active later in this video actually in the in the next in the next couple minutes uh, i will be taking some damage on purpose i'll be uh, basically sitting stationary so that i can take some shoot damage i'll be turning on the booster and i'll keep the special mode active now your capacitor will recharge a bit slower while the, while the special mode is active some 20 percent slower which means that you have to be careful uh, with the with the past with the tank. However, if you have a large Nosferatu, that will not be a problem. A large Nosferatu will easily maintain the ship. That's why I actually recommend that you use a large Nosferatu on uh, on a PVE build for this ship. But if you don't have a large Nosferatu, or even in uh, PVP, if you have an active tank, it's also very crucial to be. Uh, to be very careful uh, oh, not to let the capacitor run low. However, we can turn off the 
special mode basically it will uh, start recovering your capacitor faster after all the effect will be gone it also costs energy to activate the special mode and that is the common thing for the fiend and for the cells would be interesting to see how the special mode on the other two faction cruisers performs but so far it seems to be uh, in common for all of them uh, that they take some energy when they're activated and again uh, I really do like the special modes and I really expect them to change the special modes at one point the one thing that I can see them do is improve them uh, basically buff the special mode and perhaps the special mode might start giving some Ooh. other traits for the ship like let's say passive shield regeneration my friends, myself included, were very upset. Well, not really upset, but uh, I was personally quite sad when I saw the passive shield re regeneration nerf. I mean, it, it was so fun to fight us the Fiend with the, with the passive shield tank. That thing was so fun. I, I cannot explain how fun that was. I had EVE online wipes. That's the level of fun that I had with the, with the Fiend with a passive shield tank. You know, I, you know what, I, what I'll actually do? I, I think... I'll have to write a message to the developers uh, just to explain to them a couple things on, uh, on you know, uh, let's say I'll give them some tips and advices on the on the passive shield regeneration. They do listen. I know that they watch these videos. Uh, I know that they made some changes because of some of the videos that I made. And Cloud or I don't know who's who was in charge of the of the modules and balancing. Uh, but if you're listening to this, please return the passive shield regeneration to to the ships because players loved it and it would make these ships a, a lot more unique I would say since they're already made to be unique they should have unique stats now the special mode is unique the stats are unique but they also need to have a bit more you know uh, a bit more a bit more different a bit more difference uh, from a bit more difference from the other ships and I think uh, you guys would agree with that as well because I know a lot of you have uh, have told me about the passage to the regeneration nerf and I know all of you were not happy about that I wasn't happy as well but we can I think we we can make them buff that passive shield regeneration doesn't have to be like 300 seconds it can be I don't know 600 it would still be good it can be 900 seconds it would still be good so uh, does have to be 300 we all would probably be happy with 600 or 900 seconds. Holy it will make these ships a bit more unique, and the way how you build them will also be uh, a lot more, a lot more interesting because you would have, uh, you definitely would have much more options for for fitting these ships. But so far, uh, the passive tank on the Fiend, even after the nerf, works really well. Speed tank on that thing is fantastic. However, the active tank is also pretty solid and. I also do like it. Uh, I also do like it a lot. And same thing can be applied to the Celos. Definitely a fantastic speed tank, and definitely uh, has the potential to be a very good active tank. But it is a endo ship, so speed, stealth, and DPS are the are the main traits for this ship. And you can definitely uh, see the difference in the capacitor regeneration speeds with the special mode on or off. So, yeah. Uh, if you have to boost shield, turn off the special mode and use Nostrad to get as much capacitor back as possible. When a capacitor is above 30, 35, 40%, then you can turn on the special mode and basically get that extra DPS out of this ship. So, uh, I'm very curious to know which one of these four new faction ships you have or you fly. As promised, uh, I will be flying all of them. Uh, this is the second one that I, that I was flying. The next one will probably be the Chameleon. Uh, that one seems to be player's favorite at the moment. The Fiend and the Chameleon seem to be uh, the ones that I see the most, while the Drastia is definitely the least popular one, but I'll 
I'll be flying the airship as well. I mean, I promise to fly all of them and I love to keep my promise. And I will. Uh, so next time, I'll be back in the chameleon. Wait, hold a second. The video is not, is not ending yet. Well, uh, yeah, I'll save that for the for the last couple minutes. But, you know, uh, I'll probably do the 1000 Kinlock challenge on one of these ships. I just have to decide on which one to do it because uh, I like to I like to have that 1000 Kinlock challenge uh, you know to be special. I, I would love to to keep it special. I mean it is kind of special because it is kind of difficult to achieve. And besides that, uh, I also do the no death one. So far in 2023, I haven't lost anything. I have a clean kill record. 100% kill to death ratio, which means I have only kills, no deaths in this year. Probably the best kill death ratio in the game at the moment. And I do plan on finishing that. Which means uh, I have to keep on popping ships while I must avoid to die at all costs. That's a difficult challenge, I have to admit, because I have been close to losing ship, to losing ships. Uh, but thankfully, uh, didn't happen. Hopefully, it won't happen. But we will see. So far, I think I've been doing really well with uh, with my with my little bows there. But the cells, or the well, that could be a cover top cinnabob. You know, I was very confused when. Uh, well, actually, actually not confused, was a, was a meme. A core top cinnabar. I never thought I'd actually be flying one. And here we are. In a... Cover tops. Ship. You know, it was kind of surprising for me that they did decide with the special ships. I thought that they would do something a bit more normal. I think they wanted to excite people uh, with these special ships because they are quite rare in EVE Online and having the chance to fly them in this game is kind of uh, a nice touch to be honest so I'm definitely happy to have the chance to fly them definitely uh, happy that these ships seem to be performing really well and uh, we'll definitely be happy when their price goes back up because I might decide and buy a bunch of them uh, just so that I have a lot of them for, uh, for the moment when their price goes back up but with that being said, hope that you guys enjoyed this little run with the cells, or well, with the camel. Um, I'm still not really sure why they changed the name, but in any case, I think cells does sound a bit more angelic, as I mentioned before at the start of the video. So, uh, if you would like to see more, or if you would like to support me, feel free to like and subscribe. And with that being said, fly safe, stay safe, and as always, I'll see you next time.